everybody, happy Monday and welcome back to another reading update. So I didn't have a video last week because Arkansas got hit with that insane snowstorm. We had like 10 inches of snow, which is the first time we've had more than an inch of snow in like 10 years. Fortunately, Arkansas is a little better prepared for this kind of weather. Our infrastructure was able to handle this better than uh, our friends in Texas who are still, de still dealing with loss of power, loss of heat, electricity. So um, if you are able, there's lots of different resources to donate to help Texans kind of get back on their feet after a, this natural, it's basically a natural disaster. But what that meant was I had stupidly left my recording equipment in our office, which is 45 minutes away from where we live. So I was unable to record a video last week. Right now the plan is to release two videos this week to make up for that. So anyway, just a little bit about why the channel wasn't active last week and what you can expect this week. So let's get started. Okay, so since my last video, um, I finished two books. The first one I'm going to talk about is American Delirium uh, by Bettina Gonzalez. Bettina Gonzalez is an Argentinian novelist. This is her first translated work. This book <laughs> is insane. I spent probably the first, it's only like 200 pages long and I spent probably the first 70 to 90 pages confused. That wasn't a bad thing uh, because it does wrap up pretty nicely in the end. It is left on a little bit of an open ending, a little bit of a cliffhanger. So if that bothers you, just keep that in mind. But I felt satisfied by the ending and I, I felt like I could kind of piece together what the story was, um, but American Delirium is about a Midwestern town where all of these strange happenings just start occurring. The deer population starts attacking people. The adults in the area start just abandoning their lives, so abandoning children, abandoning their jobs, and just going to live in this commune in the woods. And then some of the townspeople start experiencing these like mass hallucinations. So the story is told from three perspectives. It is told from the perspective of an elderly woman in the community, a nine-year-old girl whose mother has disappeared, and an immigrant from the Caribbean who also happens to be a taxidermist at the local natural history museum. So you get these three different perspectives throughout the novel and then at the end you kind of see how all of these different people and their lives kind of run together. It is very, very, very character driven. I think I related it in my review that I posted on Instagram to We Ride Upon Sticks by Quan Berry. Subject matter is not at all the same, but just the, the way that the author explores the characters and the way the characters grow and change uh, and move the novel forward is very similar. So if you are okay with a slower paced plot and you like uh, more character centric novels and you're okay with a little bit of bizarreness thrown in there, um, then I would definitely recommend American Delirium. It just came out last Tuesday, so it's on shelves now. Um, and I loved it. It's definitely kind of in that surrealist fiction realm, which is one of my favorite genres. Um, and yeah, I gave it a four out of five stars and highly recommend. So that is once again, American Delirium by Bettina Gonzalez. Okay, next one I finished. Um, I did finally finish A Winter's Promise by Christelle Davo. Um, A Winter's Promise is the first book in the Mirror Visitor series, which is a, it's a total of four books, I believe it's a quartet. It is about a dystopian-esque world. So a big event has happened that happened. They call the rupture, which has basically changed Earth as we know it. Um, there's not a really exact time period. We we're led to believe that it does take place sometime after our generation has been killed in this, this cataclysmic event. The world is divided into what's known as an arc. So arcs are basically family units that have created these civilizations. And within each different arc, there are different powers that those members of the family have. So Ophelia is from Animus, or she can tell history in the past through objects. So whenever she interacts with an object, she basically, um, she's able to understand that object's past in history. 
And she also can walk through mirrors, which is, you know, why it's called the Mirror Visitor series. Um, but she is promised to marriage to a young man named Thorn, who is from this other arc that's basically in like the polar region. So it's this very, very, very harsh climate, uh, both just in regards to the outside world, but also politically, uh, there's lots of danger in this arc. So without any choice in the matter, she is kind of sent away from her family with her aunt as a chaperone to live until her wedding day. When she gets there, she kind of realizes that there's more reason behind this marriage than a alliance between the two arc. There's very strange political things going on. And so she realizes she's kind of a pawn in this game. And the whole book is her trying to survive in this really harsh climate, and then also trying to figure out exactly how she is involved in all of this. I got completely swept away by this world and the world building that Debo does throughout the novel. All of the characters, in my opinion, are very lovable, even some of the more flawed characters um, that are, you know, members of the dragon clan, which is uh, Thorn's family. I will say, if you're looking for a romance, it is the world's slowest burn. I am 500, this one's like a little over 500 pages, and they still don't even talk to each other, and they like hate each other. Um, so I've heard things kind of get a little more focused in on the romance between Thorn and Ophelia in the second book, which I haven't started yet. Um, but still, even that I've heard is still very slow and it's not even, uh, it doesn't even kind of get to a stable point uh, throughout the next like 500, 600 pages of the second book. But overall, I'm really, really enjoying this series. It's been a great thing to kind of pull me out of a reading slump and just to really invest in a magical world. Just a nice, comforting winter read. So I'm really enjoying uh, the series so far. Uh, I would definitely give this first book a four out of five stars. Um, and that is A Winter's Promise by Christelle Lebeau. Okay, so what I'm reading right now. I started Pure Nessie. I originally started it uh, because I was thinking that it could potentially be a recommendation for our March annual book club pick, which will be announced this week. And so I picked it up thinking that that might uh, relate and then realized pretty quickly that it doesn't. Um, but I'm still reading it because I am enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. I've always wanted to read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, uh, which is also written by Susanna Clark but I've been very intimidated by the length. It is like, I think I downloaded the audio book and it's like 40 hours long and I just couldn't deal with that. But Pure Nessie is actually making me want to read that even more because I love Santa Clark's writing style. Uh, I was, have, first of all, I was super surprised to find out that I'm assuming, and I might be wrong in this because I'm not very far into it, but I'm assuming Pure Nessie is human I, this whole time, based on the cover, thought that he was a fawn, and um, I also was surprised to find out that it's written in, like, diary entries, which it's been a very long time since I've read a book written like that. So I am still only, I think, since I last, again, only, like, 85 pages into it. Um, I'm reading it really quickly, though. It is a, a one that you can you know, a page turner, one that you can get through pretty quickly. I just have been kind of all over the place mentally and haven't been able to focus. So my books are dragging on a little bit, uh, but I am hoping to finish this by the next time I post a reading update. And so we'll have my full thoughts for you then. Uh, that once again, that's Pure Nessie by Susanna Clark. Okay, so I made a non-official goal for to read more nonfiction in 2021. I am not a nonfiction reader and I wanted to challenge myself without putting too much pressure by like saying I want to read this many nonfiction books. So I'm just trying to like over time as I find things that interest me, pick them up and read them. And if I end up reading more nonfiction than I did in 2020, then great. Um, so the one that I'm reading right now, this is my third nonfiction book of the year, is Trace by Lorette Savoy. Um, Trace is a memoir about the author's relationship to the American landscape. She is a black woman who grew up in the West, or 
was born in the West and then at a very young age uh, was moved to DC. And it's about her nostalgia and relationship to all of these different landscapes from where she grew up to where she lives now and to places she visited as a child. It talks a lot about relationships to land and land ownership for different races. So she talks about indigenous peoples. She talks about European colonists. Uh, she talks about free and enslaved peoples and how race changes someone's relationship to land. She grew up during the civil rights movement. So she talks a lot about racism towards her as she is attending school in DC and as she is continuing her career. I'm not very far into it. So she's still a child in most of this. Um, but I know that her relationship to her family and this kind of goal of finding where her ancestors were from and who her ancestors were is a, a big part of the novel as well. It is really, really, really gorgeously written. I usually have a very low tolerance for writers such as Thoreau and um, other like naturalist writers, but this uh, is has enough of a balance between landscape and then also contemporary race relationships that it's uh, I'm staying very engaged in that. Uh, so I will definitely have more as I get further into this, but once again, that is Trace by Lorette Savoy. Okay. Now into what I bought. The first one I am going to talk about is actually one that my husband bought, but I'm definitely going to read. It is Tales from the Hinterland by Melissa Albert. So he and I both love the Hazelwood and the Night Country, which are Melissa Albert's YA fantasy series. I think we're still waiting on a third. I think there's still going to be a third novel in the Hazelwood series, but um, she actually this year published Tales of the Hinterland, which is a collection of the stories that the Hazelwood stems from. It is so pretty. It is illustrated um, and each story has a different border around it um, in red that kind of reflects the, the stories themselves. I am absolutely thrilled that we own this and that I can experience these stories a little more because if you haven't read The Hazelwood, I highly recommend it, but it is very much like a dark fairy tale, very Brothers Grimm um, and spooky, just, yeah, spooky dark fairy tales, which are some of my favorite things. So that is Tales of the Hinterland by Melissa Albert. Okay, last thing I bought is The Missing of Claire de Lune, which is the second book in the Mirror Visitor series, which I spoke about earlier. Um, I'm not gonna give a summary of this because I just gave you guys a summary of the first one, but I am in love with the illustration style on the, these covers, and I wish that I had the first, now I wish I had the first one in hardback and not paperback, but I guess I will survive. Um, I haven't started it yet. I just got it on Thursday, I think. So I haven't had it very long, but yeah, I'm really excited to read it. Um, and I'm hoping that even though it is a casual 500 something pages, I will be able to finish it before my next video. So yeah, that's everything that I have this week. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, like I said, I am planning on posting another video on Thursday as long as all of the technical things go according to plan. Um, in the meantime, like, comment, let me know what you're reading, what you just read or what you just bought. And of course, subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram at NotSoWellRead. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.